Hello, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. My name is Kevin Gregg. Welcome to the show. This is the show that is designed to help you reflect, refresh, reinvigorate, reinvent your life according to God's call for your life. Hi. If you're first time here, thanks for coming. Uh, today, special day. Uh, didn't do it live, but I decided I was going to record it anyway. It's the 50th episode. So 50 episodes of the Kevin Gregg Show, which I'm super happy about, right? Uh, that means like over 10 weeks ago, I started this. I've been doing about three shows a week for over 10 weeks or so now. Maybe it is definitely more, um, but really glad to show up with you guys. I thought for today, there's something that popped up in my mind, and I'm just going to share it with you. I have been thinking about Quentin Tarantino. Um now, just over the weekend, he was actually on another podcast with a guy named Brian Koppelman being interviewed. And actually, I had listened to Quentin Tarantino probably, oh, I want to say three weeks ago, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. He has been uh, doing the rounds because he's released a novelization of his book, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And it's his first time that he's done a, a novelization so he's making the rounds and and dropping by the podcast and i had been i had been thinking about him for a while and it was actually a very interesting interview with him on the joe rogan podcast uh because i was listening a little bit to his history and everything that's gone on with him you know quentin tarantino uh very very interesting for me because there was a big change and a turning that had happened in my heart uh, back in about 2015. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, you know, he's he is an accomplished filmmaker. I want to say that. You know, over the years, when I first got introduced to him, I first knew about him from Reservoir Dogs back in about 91, 92. I was still in college. Somebody had a videotape of it saying, you got to see this movie. It's kind of like a, it's, it's almost like a stage play. And of course, being in theater at the time, you know, I was like, great, let's take a look at it. And I remember being captivated because it had that, you know, it had that feel of like guys in cool suits and it had this gangster feel to it. And of course the pop culture references and, you know, the, the violence and swearing. And it was, it was just kind of like independent it was all of that like early 90s independent cinema, which him, then Robert Rodriguez, Kevin Smith did it. Uh, eventually, Ed Burns did it. You know, there was this time in the early 90s where it felt like you would hear these stories and it didn't it didn't happen specifically with Tarantino because he'd already been a little bit on the scene because he'd sold a screenplay and was, was already getting a little bit of heat. Um, and Reservoir Dogs wasn't, you know... He said it on the Joe Rogan podcast, it was it was like a maybe a million dollar, two million dollar picture. Go to that, go to that podcast to double check that stuff. But you know, it was around that time, especially with him and then also with the Robert Rodriguez uh, stuff and Kevin Smith, it just felt like, oh boy, anybody can make a movie. <laughs> you know, there was even there was even a period of time where, you know, Ed Burns' story was that. He had run up like $25,000 in credit card debt. And I think Kevin Smith had done something very similar. Like these guys took out these credit card uh, loans, you know, maxed out their credit cards. So they could get film stock. And then it was about shooting the film for as cheap as possible and then getting it into the film festivals. And everybody was so excited. And there really was a, a period of time where the, the industry just got glutted, right? It just got glutted by people that said, um, oh yeah, I can make a movie too. Yeah, all I need is 25,000 bucks. And it's like, no, it's not just that. You need a little bit more than that. But uh, Quentin Tarantino was one of those guys I really followed. And then especially by the time like Pulp Fiction came out, which was so, the cinematography in that and sort of the messing around with time and using theme as sort of a, a through line with it and just some very iconic moments in that film. Now I say all of this because over time as I've gotten older and have continued on my journey with, with my faith, right, with my Christianity, with my Catholicism, that you look back at, at a lot of that stuff and go, oh man, that's, 
And it's not even so much, I guess it's a thing that, that really happened here over the last 15, 20 years, right? It's the glorification of the anti-hero, the glorification of evil men, right? You see this with Tony Soprano. You've seen this with Breaking Bad with Walter White. Um, you know, these guys, these bad guys who are basically put into the hero position and glorified. And even, you know, Don, for less to, to, to some extent, like Don Draper and Mad Men, like these guys that get away with bad behavior and yet we're following them on their journey and we're kind of rooting for them. And there are many elements of that in Tarantino's movies. Um, but, you know, also along the way, he's had such a, he's had this ability with um, his knowledge of cinema and being able to craft things and, and even long dialogue. The fact that this is a guy that could just write pages and pages and pages of dialogue and have you just captivated with it. I remember getting a hold of a, a copy of the screenplay of Pulp Fiction. I don't know how I got it. Somebody must have had, I mean, I was literally, I was just obsessed with it. I remember I got a Xerox copy of the script from someone who got a hold of it. And I remember just pouring over that and just wanting to write material like that. Um, and then, I, you know, you flash forward through, through, through a few things, you know, uh, Kill Bill was a little bit over the top for me personally, because it was just, I wasn't as much into the Kung Fu genre when I was growing up, I mean, I, I knew of it. And, and of course it was ultra violent. Um, you know, and of course I'm skipping over other things that he did like, like Jackie Brown or uh, even his involvement in from dust till dawn or the other uh, what's the one, the double feature one that he did with the stunt car thing with, with Kurt Russell. I ended up never seeing that. Cause I just thought, Oh, I don't want to watch something that's that gruesome. Um, death proof, death proof. Um, you know, but then you saw something like Inglorious Bastards, which again, when you had performances like Christoph Waltz and, and Tarantino was, Tarantino has always been very good at this about like really stretching out very much like Alfred Hitchcock, stretching out the, um, tension in a scene, right? Like you're very, the suspense, like you don't know what's going to happen in a scene or something will cut, catch you completely off guard, which he was very good at. You know, a turning point that happened for me with Tarantino was I started feeling a little bit of this. I'd watched Django Unchained, which which had good moments in it, but again, ultra violence and just moments in it where you go, gosh, man, there's just there's a lot of evil that's going on in this film. And even though there's some revenge and justice that's being served, it's like whew, it's a lot. And that was even present in Inglorious Bastards. You know, you've got, you know. You know, in a spoiler alert for a movie that's several years old, but, you know, um, you know, you've got the parts of the, the Jewish and Glorious Bastards team that in this alternate timeline of history, you know, they, they kill Hitler in a movie theater, but then they start mowing down all of these people and these two guys just like, they're consumed by like rage and murder and hate. And you go just like, what <laughs> it's it's part of it's like okay you killed hitler and you also feel like you've lost your soul at the same time right you may have avoided a great evil in this timeline but the rage and the murder and the hate that you have like it's not good for your soul i think that this all this really for me it really hit like a crossroads when um uh the hateful eight came out that was back in 2015 and there was some stuff that happened around that time you know i remember going to see that movie and the big thing with the hateful eight was like here's this epic western and it's got all these guys in it and he's using like panasonic cameras you know that were like they're like 60 millimeter it's like it's all an homage to cinematography right from the last you know 40 or 50 years and I remember they were doing even a why they were doing a roadshow version of uh, the film. We went down to the arc light at Sherman Oaks to go see this film that was being presented in this 
60 millimeter widescreen format and we spent extra money and got like a souvenir thing and i will tell you it was one of the most i felt i felt dirty when i came out of it now in listening to him in interviews afterwards that's sort of his point is that none of these people are redeemable um but boy when you're just immersed in that tinginess and evilness and, and all of that stuff just non-stop violence and and just oh and it was just it was really hard because it was really this movie that was like beautifully shot in the way that they did it um and the way that it was created and the actors that he got working on it and you just look at it and go what have i just watched what have i just watched I remember, and I actually pulled it up for this back in 2015. And when I said, there's a, there's a website that's called Plugged In. And this is from, it's associated with Focus on the Family. Uh, but PluggedIn.com, and they've got movie reviews. I'll put this in the show notes. But there's this uh, writer, Paul Say. he's a film critic. He wrote this, he wrote this review about, uh, the hateful eight that I just, I thought it was just so right on the nose, right? It's like, here you've got somebody like Quentin Tarantino, who is, he really knows, like he, he knows his, his movies. He knows his movies. He knows his cinema. He knows storytelling. But Paul is saying this uh, um, film critique back in 2015, he said, you know, the hardest thing with this, and I'm paraphrasing, but he says the hardest thing with this is like you go to a five-star restaurant where you know that the chef can just cook these extravagant meals, makes this great stuff. And it's like they bring out, you know, the salad or the lobster, all this stuff. And the chef has decided that for all of this beautifully cooked meal and presented meal, he's going to put horseradish over everything, right? So it just overpowers what the meal is. And and that was sort of my experience with, with that movie. I think that he got it right on the nose, which is like, here's this beautifully filmed movie and you've got these actors and the potential for what this is. And it's just drenched in all of this other stuff. And it was really one of those things where at that time I just said, I think I'm done. I think I'm sort of done with Quentin Tarantino. I don't know if I can do this again. And once upon a time in Hollywood came out, I heard a lot of people gushing over it and I said, ah, I don't think I'm interested in it. I finally saw it when it came out on, it came out on cable. I finally thought, ah, all right, I'll pull, I'll, I'll pull the trigger. And, you know, I was enthralled with that movie. Like the, the characterizations, the work that Leonardo DiCaprio did in that of like an actor who's afraid that he's washed up and even Brad Pitt's performance in it, and even the storytelling in this in the movie, uh, Margot Roby, like all of it was just like this. It was like it's an over a three. It felt like it was over a three hour film, three hour long film, and it just flew by. Now, granted, in typical Tarantino style, what happens? Massive violence towards the end. Massive violence, right? Um, but it's an alternate timeline again, right? And not so overpowering. Why am I bringing all this stuff up? Why am I talking about Quentin Tarantino today? And it really doesn't, you know, yes. Did he happen to come out over the weekend and there was some stuff that he, you know, <laughs> addressed about his mom, you know, his mom not believing in him as a writer when he was a kid and making a vow that, you know, she's never going to see a dime of any of this money when I make it big and he has and to his word, he's not shared any of that money with his mom. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Right. It's, it's one of those things of going, that's something between himself and his mother. For some reason he felt led to share that. Um, you know, would I make the same decision or choices? I no. I mean, you know, but, but I don't know what his relationship is with his mom and it's sensational that he said it, right? It's very interesting. But I think the thing that sort of comes up with me with Quentin Tarantino is when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, I got the feeling, and I don't know if it's the case. I might be speaking out of turn. 
but he said something at one point where he just said, you know, I've been given this, you know, I've, I've been given this, this, I'm paraphrasing again, but I got the feeling like he said that this was his God given talent, right? Like he was given these, these talents for a reason. And, and I got the feeling like there was like, there was some sort of a belief system. Like there was a thing of like, I think this guy believes in a higher power. I think this guy believes in God. And I'm not sure what to, I'm not sure what to make of that. And it's not, Believe me, man, it's, it's not a judgment call on this of like, you, you know, oh, the filth that you put into the world. That's not what this is. But I think what it what it does say to me is to go, what would it be like if Quentin Tarantino with his abilities and skills and talent was able to make something that had that didn't celebrate gruesomeness or the evil in men's hearts. I think it's just as simple as that. Like what if he had, what if he had done something that, you know, what if he created work in his life that didn't celebrate gruesomeness, gratuity, um, and the evil in men's hearts, hearts. Because I think that he can touch on those things of like love and hope and also, and, you know, definitely facing adversity. You know, there's nothing to say that uh, I, I never have a problem with movies that show the bad side, the bad side of life because it exists, right? It's not about being a Christian and, and hiding your, putting your head in the sand and saying, no, nothing bad exists. Nothing bad exists. It does but seeing people come out the other side and maybe seeing good triumph. I don't know. It's just an interesting thought. So I suppose maybe it's a call to somebody that's out there that somebody that believes in God, somebody that believes in Christ, um, somebody that has that potential. What could you do with those talents? I don't know. I think more than anything else, it's just a thought experiment. Um, does it mean that I'm going to be completely shut off Quentin Tarantino from my life? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I enjoyed his last movie. I'd probably say that the odds are, and again, who am I to talk, but you know, you get a good one, then you get one. That's not so great. It wouldn't surprise me if, cause he's talked about that. There's one more movie that he's going to do. And then who knows what direction he's going to go with his career. He might do television. He might just continue writing. Who knows what it is? Um, <laughs> if I were a betting man, it might be a, it might be a pretty gruesome send off. Who knows? Um, anyway, those are just some some thoughts that I want to share because you know I was at that point. I remember just being, I suppose, there was a part of me that wanted to emulate him when I was younger, right? And, uh, you know, there are parts, particularly in the entertainment industry, where there are, there are some things that make no rhyme nor reason. I was having a conversation with a uh, younger cousin of mine over the weekend who's shown interest in getting involved in the entertainment industry. And if there's one thing that I've learned over the years is there's no set formula. Like, I can't give you a set formula for success, right? Just because... Sometimes people that I've known that have just like hit it have hit it for fantastic reasons. And there's other people I've known that have hit it and you just go, huh, what, you know? Um, and that's not to say, I mean, Quentin Tarantino is somebody that definitely had skills, right? But for some reason, Quentin Tarantino and, you know, a guy that had that sort of vision of, you know, the gratuity, the shock value, the gruesomeness, that was something that kind of like got, I don't know, it was something that, that really took off. And for some reason, it really touched on, it touched on the, uh, uh, what movie go goers wanted to see. So do I have an answer for it? You know, again, a lot of this is just speculative, but again, I think that those are just some thoughts I had wanted to share. They were sort of rolling around for a while. 
And there was a part of me that for a while, I just like, I want to be, I want to be like that. I want to be him. And uh, I don't think not, not at that cost, not to say that he doesn't have, you know, I'm sure that there's aspects of his life that are, that are beautiful and blessed. Right. I know that he's got a son now that he really loves. He's married and, you know, and he's also a guy that's got a little bit of, uh, he's got some creative and maybe some financial freedom to be able to do some stuff, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Just a thought. What will you do with the skills and talents that you're given and how are you using it for God's kingdom? I think that that's the ultimate thing that sort of rolls through my head today as I'm talking about him. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for listening to me share those thoughts today. Uh, appreciate it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to support the Kevin Gregg show, best way to do it, go over to kevingregg.locals.com. Sign up over there. It's free. Uh, but if you want to become a supporter, there's also uh, videos that I have under there. Current series is about the parameters for working on a project. Uh, always appreciate it. Got great stuff that's coming up. Got an interview with a friend of mine, Doug Riggle, that I've been working on a project with. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Then I think we've got one more interview with Patrick Quinn before he goes off to do some more stuff. So looking forward to sharing more thoughts with you, my friends. God bless you, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye now.